Commercial buildings help business owners to trade and make sure that we have places to go shop, to go eat, and to basically enjoy our lives. This is the Private Property Podcast. My name is Dumi. Let's unpack. My guest tonight is Wendy Jani, who is a portfolio manager at Abril Property Management. We're going to be talking a little bit more how if you are a, a property investor, you can keep your commercial property investment in top condition. So hope you stay with us throughout the conversation tonight as we talk. Wendy, good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. And uh, hopefully everybody at home is doing well. Send us those green hearts in the comment section and let us know how your day has been. And if you are looking forward to the conversation we are about to have tonight. So, Wendy, jumping into uh, straight into the conversation tonight, tell me more about your experience in the commercial property management space. How has that been for you? And um, are there different categories? Are there, is it different in terms of industries um, when, you're when you're working with these commercial properties? Okay, so I've been in the property game for approximately 13 to 14 years now. Um, I started at the bottom, uh, basically as a lease administrator, and I've grown uh, to arrive where I'm sitting now, which is a property portfolio manager at Abril uh, Property Management, uh, where I manage the jewel um, of their crown, which is Hartford Office Park, based in Waterfall. Um, in terms of the experience, I have grown substantially because I've been exposed to leasing as well as ops management and understanding the different aspects of it. Um, prior to Abril, I worked for JHI where I was working under Fortress, which was an industrial portfolio. And uh, believe it or not, uh, in as much as I love my heels, <laughs> I had to wear um, safety shoes and a safety hat. So I worked on an industrial portfolio as well. Um, I've dabbled a bit in terms of retail. Uh, I've worked on approximately two retail centers, okay. not for a very long time, uh, just a few months. Uh, my strengths are definitely in both commercial and uh, industrial. Sure. And yeah. tell me about if one wants to start a career in, in property management or even commercial property, whether it's residential actually or property, um, okay. what, what can they do? Where do they go to study? What kind of courses do they study? And if maybe someone is already um, working, what okay. can, can they divert? Can they come into the space? Um, just talk us through that a little bit. Okay. So you've got actually three options. I know Pretoria offers a degree in property management. Vitz offers one as well. Um, if you've got prior um, experience, right, they do w or a different degree, suppose accounting, for example, um, they offer you RPL, which is through the SAPOA system. So okay. they recognize what you studied, okay, and they would obviously exempt you from um, certain parts of that course. Sure. And then you would go through what they call logbooks, etc., cetera, and uh, finish that. And then, then you would be recognized as a fully fledged uh, property uh, practitioner. Nice. And some of the challenges, let's talk, let's talk those, because, you know, we know everything that's rosy has thorns here and there. Yeah. Let's talk about the challenges that you've experienced and encountered in your journey. And they, uh, they also might not be something that's really peculiar to you. Maybe they're just some of those challenges that are in the industry. Okay. What are some of those challenges that you could just um, uh, take us through tonight? Okay. So, look, in terms of property management, um, I always tell people that it's actually more people management. Um, a property is a building that's sitting. You, yeah. you can manage a building. Um, the challenges is always maintaining the balance between your landlord as well as your tenants, your suppliers, your shareholders. Um, and always as a property portfolio manager, you're always the ham in the sandwich. Okay. <laughs> so I would say that's a particular challenge, um, but it is something that I do enjoy uh, simply because I'm somebody that loves interacting with people. Uh, that's been my biggest strength as well, building relationships um, in terms of not only just your tenants as clients, but your suppliers as well as your different shareholders. Sure. Um, I would say, yeah, pretty much that's it. Sure. And let's talk about um, the tools and techniques. I mean, you're saying this is one of the things that you enjoy. So I'm sure there are some tools and techniques you employ mm. in, in order to make you successful because, I mean, you've been here for 13 years mm. and I'm sure you'll still be in the game for even longer than that. So let's let's talk about some of the tools and techniques you've employed and how, how someone out there who's watching us today can, mm. can benefit from employing the same. Um, so look, I would say firstly, the most important thing is having um, the correct technology. 
Yeah. Um, so you've got different uh, variants of that. You've got MDA, you've got Nico, you've got Sapoa, you've got Oracle. Mm -hmm. there's, several, uh, uh, there's several different uh, ma property management tools that you can sure. utilize, okay? Mm -hmm. But other than that, I think the most important people is having the right team, um, the right structure, um, the right support. Um, I'll give you an example. At Abril, I've been there for about 14 months now. I can't live without my ops manager. He's like my right hand man, you know. Um, if we need to get down in the trenches, we do as well as my property administrator. So having a team that understands your drive, has the same passion, you know, and the desire to obviously meet uh, expectations both landlord-wise and tenant-wise, that's the most important thing. When you have a team like that, then you won't fail at all. So that is, I would say, skill set sure. and best, um, your best uh, uh, technical uh, uh, tool. And you're speaking about technology, and that's one of my next questions in terms of, you know, technology is only great when it works. And so yes. many people um, are scared of it because they, have, they feel that it will take away um, the human element and it will take away um, people's jobs because everything mm -hmm. is getting automated and things are going online. Mm -hmm. um, what is your feeling around um, using these technological um, advances now? Right? Are you saying we should, this is the way to go? If someone is a portfolio manager out there, you're saying definitely get it. And do you think it will make some jobs extinct? Um, I think it is definitely the way to go. Mm -hmm. um, I do not think it will make jobs extinct. Yeah. I think it will make our lives easier, to be quite sure. frank with you. Um, currently at Abril, we are going through that process where we are automating a lot of our reports, okay, yeah. through the system that we use there. Uh, it is not an intention to eliminate, let's say, per se, the job of a property administrator, but it is maybe to basically say to edify, to get more accurate and correct reports. Um, when I say that it will definitely not eliminate jobs, what I mean is that what we need to do as a people as South Africa and as you know, uh, students out there, then focus on careers that then drive that prop tech. Yeah. So as opposed to going to study something that's becoming extinct now, yeah. uh, rather go study uh, technology you know, uh, which would then allow you to drive the different um, technical systems in every, you know, property organization, to, no matter what role you play. Yeah. So I wouldn't say that it would limit or, uh, uh, or you know, il make things extinct. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't say that. Definitely. Um, let's talk now in the South African context in terms of the, the places in South Africa that you've seen in terms of location and um, geographical location. Mm -hmm. Which are the places that you you have been seeing as a trend that mm. they are coming up or mm -hmm. are phasing out? You mm -hmm. know, what are some of those geographical uh, trends that you are seeing in terms of commercial property? Well, I'm definitely going to say waterfall <laughs> um, because it's 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 what I live and breathe right now. Sure. Um, um, but to generalize, I'd say Houting. Um, it's always been the goal, the jewel of South Africa. It remains that. Yeah. So how Teng will always be an investment opportunity, in my opinion. Sure. And, you know, a question that I had um, is we, we see a lot of retailers, you know, coming mm -hmm. up. And I, I remember you just spoke about how... Um, you've dabbled a little bit in the retail space, but we've yes. seen a lot of them come up in different areas, you know, in Johannesburg and suburbs, you see mm -hmm. a lot of new retailers coming up. Do you think this is a new investment opportunity that um, an investor should start looking at, or is it something that's, you know, it's, it's a trend that's coming in, or? So, firstly, you need to ask yourself the question, why are you investing? Yeah. Okay, so I would say if my asset manager was here, I would default the question automatically <laughs> to him um, because he's more in a position to say, okay, this is the best place for you to go and uh, place your money in, um, in terms of in investment. Um, I would say, yes, retail, definitely, because we've seen what's happened with COVID where we've literally moved away from a life where we work and we go to work and we go home. It's more uh, hybrid and we work from home. So you do get retailers popping up. Um, where they're popping up, you're more than welcome to share with me. Yeah. Whether those are good investment opportunities or not, mm -hmm. that is something I would say I would default to an asset manager or a banker to say, okay, let's do the exercise, let's do the research. Sure. And let's now talk about how um, your, your highlights, rather, in your journey, because we, I want us to start rounding, rounding off our conversation tonight okay. and say, um, you, with your highlights and 
what advice would you give, right, uh, based on the highlights, to somebody who's sitting at home tonight and is like, I am looking at Wendy and I want to be like her? Um, you have to be willing to put in the work. Um, you have to be willing to start from the ground, no matter what degree you have. Um, so if you walk in and you say, I'm now the lease administrator, and I say you need to punch papers for me for the rest of the month, that's it. You need to start from the bottom. You need to put in the work. Um, most of all, you need to learn to understand your shareholders, your clients, um, their objectives, um, their intentions in terms of the properties that they've invested in. Um, that's what I would say. So I would encourage you to learn um, um, your tenants. I, I would encourage you to learn your shareholders, what their intentions are, what they see in the future 25 years from now. You know, what is their vision? Once you know and you understand that, you're driven towards that and you work towards that. So no matter where you start, whether it's making a cup of tea or making copies for a whole month, you understand the vision and you're willing to be a part of the vision or the team. Mm -hmm. So I'm willing to be a part of the vision in terms of Abril property management, where I am right now, because of the exposure I've had um, in the 14 months that I've, I've been there. So that's what I would say. Yeah, and your highlights? Highlight, um, going to a management meeting whilst I was in labor. So this is rather personal. <laughs> My daughter is four years, but I drove to a management meeting and then I drove to the hospital and I was in labor. Oh, wow. um, but because property is such a tough industry, it's made me tougher. Sure. So I think the highlight for me is I've come from being an absolutely um, sheltered child um, and being weak to being an absolutely driven, tough person, um, and I will do it no matter what. Sure. That's my highlight. Sure. That, that's a very high highlight, hey? It a is. Very high highlight. Thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you taking out the time. Not a and problem. You, I'm sure people at home have received so much great insights in terms of um, commercial property and actually becoming a portf uh, portfolio manager in its entirety because, mm -hmm. you know, portfolios can vary from res residential and commercial. Thank you so much for sharing the evening with us. Not a problem. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, guys. And thank you as well to getting to this part of the show where we say goodbye. Thank you so much for tuning in. And do tune in again tomorrow, same time, same place, right here on the Private Property Podcast. Also, ensure that you follow us on all social media platforms to make sure that you never get to miss a beat. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night.